Hello and welcome back to this new video. In this video we are going to be making game models 3D printable. We're gonna make the models so smooth that I wouldn't say they're like Pixar quality but we're getting closer to it. So what I'm talking about when I say we're gonna make the skin smooth is that we're gonna sharpen a bunch of edges and make it so that the skins are subdividable. This is important because if you just upload a skin or like a game model into a 3D slicer or printing software, it might print not like smooth, but more like this. As you can see all these blocky lines, that's not exactly what you want. And because the printer, like the printer doesn't do smoothing, it might do smoothing, but it doesn't automatically think of doing that. So what we're gonna do to fix that is just smooth a bunch of shit ourselves. I would say Overwatch models are about the perfect type of model for 3D printing, or like they cover almost basically everything. So let's begin. First thing we wanna do is kind of delete everything that's necessary. And that includes these empty. So we're gonna select one entry, press Shift T, type, and delete them all. You may want to use these guns, but I'm not going to, I think. So I'm just gonna put them aside. There we go. All right. So what we're gonna do first is go in here, or one of your meshes. Go to edit mode by pressing tab. Go to face, tries to quads. Go into this little drop-down menu and select compare UVs. And the compare UVs is only if you wanna like keep your model clean looking. Now what this means, this tries to quad thing, is that we can consistently make quad loops, as you can see here. And it also means that we can subdivide the model a lot more beautifully, a lot easier. Okay, so let me show you what it looks subdivided now. That looks, uh, that looks okay actually. We could actually just print this out immediately. And now let me show you what it would be like if I subdivided it like this. Taking a long, long time. Oh, there we go. As you can see, there are all these annoying little patterns and the rest of the model doesn't get really subdivided properly because of this. You're gonna get a lot of noise in your print and that's something you don't want. And typically, of course, you want to have, in a normal modeling workflow, you want to have the quad topology. So now we're back in quads. The second thing we wanna do, if your model has any decals like this, uh, delete them, yeah. Uh, the model, the printer is not getting, like, the printer sees what we see right now. Uh, it sees this decal, and if we go into shading mode, you'll see what it does. It's this little, it's, it's mostly text. We don't need that because the printer is not going to know what to print there. So, we can throw that away, and actually, pretty much on the same topic. As you can see here, in our hair, let's just go into edit mode, and for good measure, just uh, convert, the, convert these to quads as well. As you can see here, there are a bunch of loose, thin hairs. Now, these look really good when you're like in shading mode, or in game. <laughs> but, the printer does not really know what to do with them. They're so thin, like the printer is almost most definitely going to f*** these up. So we don't want those. If you have a game model that uses hair cards, that's his way of making pretty realistic hair. I think Call of Duty typically makes their hair like that. You might want to consider modeling the hair yourself or converting to hair uh, to mesh by remeshing it. Because the printer cannot do hair cards. It can only pretty much do stylized hair. So what we're going to do with those is just delete them. So hover over... The hair card you want to select and press L to select it. You can also just select one vertex and press Ctrl L. That way you select the mesh based on that one vertex. But I think that just hovering and pressing L is a bit faster. So we're going to do that with all the loose hairs around the model like that. And now we're just going to delete them. Boom. If we go and subdivide this hair, there you go. You can see that there are these weird like openings. That's because we want to merge the loose vertices. But before we do that, we have to look inside the model and delete the inside hairs here. Because those might might cause a problem while printing, but they might not. So depending on how lazy you are, you might want to remove them. I'm just going to remove them right now. But you have to make sure before, it, like what we're going to do next is we're going to merge everything by distance. And I'll show you what I mean. I just go into edit mode, press all M and then by distance. There you go. All those little holes are gone now. Well, I was gonna say we might have some weird artifacts around the hair, but it doesn't look like Tracer has any here. Well, I'll, sh I'll show you a clip of what it typically looks like when you don't delete those inside hairs. But for now, we're just gonna show you what it looks like to delete them, I guess. <laughs> okay, I just 
realized some of these inside hairs are different from other models. So for Reinhardt, for example, the hairs are actually connected inside. And, but I think with Tracer, we can just go select all of it and then just press M, merge by distance. Uh, also, also, by the way, you have to select sharp edges. And that's just for later so that we can have, well, sharp edges. <laughs> for now, I think we can, yeah, we can just delete these. All right, I think that's enough inside hairs eliminated. What we can do now is select all of our sharp edges by pressing one sharp edge, press shift G and go to sharpness and sharpen them. And how do we do that? Uh, basically by pressing shift E and then sliding all the way up to one or just pressing one. And you might think, what does that do? That does this. It's gonna make the model a lot smoother, but also sharper around the edges where you want to be where you want it to be sharp like for example there now that doesn't do it for everything like for example you might want a sharper edge here so what we can do to still make that sharper edge is select your starting point and press Control and then left mouse button and just kind of click around the area you want to sharp this basically means it's gonna select the shortest path from where you already selected your first thing now we can press shift e to sharpen this out there we go look at that beautiful sharp edge also remember to turn off auto smooth this is basically gonna make it so that the subdivision modifier is a bit faster. Now to show you this sharpness thingy a bit better, we're gonna move on, move back to the body and we're gonna do pretty much the exact same thing we did with the hair by just merging by distance. And there we go, oh my God, we deleted a lot of vertices. Uh, but we didn't have any sharp edges either. Anyway, uh, let's apply a subdivision modifier or let's just before that turn off auto smooth and let's apply that subdivision modifier and since we didn't have any sharp edges for us cut out uh, we're gonna have to select all of our all of the edges and make them sharp ourselves and it might take a lot of time so how we would do that is basically just turning off the subdivision modifier and alt selecting a loop like this so that you can well select the, lo the loop this doesn't this isn't like a complete loop because the geometry is a bit meh here so for the rest you can just shift select one edge or vertex and just control select around to select the rest and then you can press shift E. But that takes so much time. As you can see, the results are pretty nice. Like it, it gets sharpened. But oh, if there is only a way to do that faster. Well, I'm here to tell you there is. So what you want to do still in edit mode is add a plane. Let's make sure our subdivision modifiers are turned off first. And what we want to do with that plane is select one edge, pressing E for extrude and then Z to make it nice and even. And we're gonna select this edge, which which is a 90 degree angle. We're gonna press Shift G, face angle, and set this to one and as you can see it's gonna select all the sharpest edges in our model pretty much automatically now this isn't perfect but it is a very good way to start so what we're gonna do now is press shift e and let's set it to 0.8 so not one because that is like very sharp and we don't exactly want it to be that sharp because almost everything has a nice bevel to it and we still do want to keep that so are there there are some areas where we do want the one sharpness, but I uh, I typically think 8.8 is better. So if we go ahead and, and delete this plane now and check back in with our subdivision modifier, there you go. Look at those nice sharp edges. Damn. So let me show you what it was like before, before, after, before, after. Pretty cool, right? Now there are still a lot of edges that do need smoothing or like sharpening, I guess. And we can look at those through viewport chaining and check to see if there are any edges left that need smoothing. Okay, so let's turn off this texture thing. Okay, that looks pretty good. This auto smooth did a great job, I must say. Okay, so right there is still an edge that we need to sharpen out so to make it more a bit more visible we're gonna deselect this little thingy as you can see it disables the sharpening in our viewport and as you can see we're running into a bit of a problem here we need ideally we need an edge here so that we can like make this line we make, so that we can make this line uh so how we would do that is by pressing these two together so ha having this one selected and pressing shift to select this one as well and pressing j now we have a joint bridge between them and what we can do next is to kind of delete this one because we're on need that one and how we did that is by pressing Control x it's gonna dis dissolve the edge and still leave the geometry there so that's good i think we need to select this edge and set it to 0.8 sharpening to it to 0.8 by the shift e and then i also want this line here to be 
0.8, just like this one, 0.8. So that's good. But there are also some edges that are over sharpened. For example, this one, we don't need that one to be sharpened. So what we can do there is just press Shift E and then minus one to remove all the sharpening altogether. Let's make a bridge here as well. So by pressing J, you can see that it also just makes better geometry here. When we removed all the triangles, it doesn't exactly do the greatest job at it. For example, if we look here, uh, a typical person would look at this and go like, oh, this edge loop should continue like this. But the automatic price to quads tool didn't look at it like that. It's based on math and math is sometimes not correct. So what we want to do to fix that is pretty much the same thing we did there. We're going to select one vertex, the other vertex, pressing J and do that with pretty much everything there. So we're going to basically bring back the triangles where our tool failed us. Okay. There we go. Then we're just going to delete all the wrong triangles like that. And this one too. So we're going to make that one, delete those. There we go. So we're going to do that for this one as well. And there you go. As you can see, that's a lot cleaner now. Now you don't have to do this for the whole model. As you can see, there are a bunch of problems here as well. And the OCD part in my brain is like, yo, we really need to like make this beautiful and nice and oh, remove those and like that and like that and make the topology nice. But that takes so much time and it's so unnecessary because if you look at it while well, subdivided it doesn't really make a difference does it it might make a difference while we're animating but it's unlikely that it's going to be a big one so for now we're just going to do that only for the edges where we need it to be sharp all right so now let's do a quick time lapse of me smoothing everything and sharpening everything that i want to be sharpened I am back with some tips. Right now, I kind of want to mirror this too. Why? Because I spend a lot of time working on making it sharp and stuff, and I don't want to do that on this shoe. Now what you can do, if your model doesn't have symmetrical weight paint, as you can see, this doesn't, there's no symmetry in this. This is just numbers and stuff. That's not good. You, can, you can't really like, for example, grab a bone and then just go, Oh, I want this to mirror. No, it doesn't do that on the other side. Sadly, it doesn't. Um, if, you, if you do have that, if you do have a model like that, you can just mirror it with a mirror modifier. Then you would do that by just uh, separating the shoe from the rest of the mesh by selecting it and pressing P and then just add a mirror modifier. There we go. Uh, and then also delete this, this side of the shoe. But we don't want to delete this side of the shoe just yet. If we work with like an Overwatch model that doesn't have symmetrical weight paint. What we want to do instead is slide this up, apply it, then go in here. And when well, we, when you have the only the shoe is selected, so not the mesh that is this one. So you have to, you want to have to select this one. And then we're going to select only this foot, separate it again uh, so that you have like only this foot. And then we want to delete all of these groups so go down here and go to batch delete all groups you might not have that because i have a i have an add-on that makes this easier uh but there is probably an option that lets you delete all the groups so not that now that all the groups are deleted you want to select first select this group and then select the shoe and then go into weight paint or you can do that up here go to weight transfer weight Set nearest vertex to nearest face interpolated and set source layer to by name. And as you can see, you have all the groups back. And if I'm right, you can just grab the foot mesh, shift select the armature, press control P and then just armature the form. Let's turn off the subdivision for now. And also on this foot subdivision off. So if I'm right, we can just select the mesh and now 
yeah, as you can see, it works perfectly fine. This one as well. And now we just want to delete this sh shoe like that. Boom, delete. And there we go. We have our perfectly intact shoe right here that oh, that works perfectly well with the subdivision and is perfectly mirrored with this one. All right, I think this is about good enough. I mean, you can keep and keep going, refining everything, but I mean, we, we have to stop somewhere, <laughs> somewhere. <laughs> so what we're gonna do now is just give her a basic pose and then check if there are some things we need to do extra for the printer to print her with a higher rate of success. All right, now that we have a pose, we're basically ready to print. But before we do that, we kind of want to make sure that our print is going to print well. What do I mean by that? It's like adjusting some things to make it easier for the printer to not mess up. So for example, this, this little hair here, I kind of shoved it in, into the head because it would have to print an entire support like from here to there to start printing that hair because the printer goes Whoop, 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 whoop. And then it can't just go whoop, whoop. It doesn't do that. It's small things like that. For example, for the Doom Fist fist I made, I had to fill up quite a bunch of holes to make sure that the print didn't have too many like supports that you would have to remove and then have poor printing quality. I would rather fill up some holes than uh, remove bad structure, I guess. <laughs> now this pose is gonna be quite a quite the nightmare to print because it's gonna need a lot of support and that's probably why I'm going to be printing it more like this like that so that it can more easily print up so that it doesn't really have to print like a support here and then a support here and then a support here and then a support there and there and there yeah and also like things like these like little things poking out you might want to like put those like close near the body like this maybe just kind of intentionally make it so that it looks like it's supposed to press to be pressed up to the body to get the minimal amount of supporting needed at least that's my advice just like that now if you have a resin printer that's less of a problem but i have an ftm printer and that's gonna still like not be good same thing goes here kind of look out for these long sharp hairs which are going to be annoying to break off now, I currently don't really have a way to make this make sure that this is just gonna print well. It's gonna need a support from either here to there or like from the base down up to there. That's a bit sad, but we'll see how that goes. And I'm pretty sure I'm gonna add like a sort of bolts coming out here and then it goes like whoop and then whoop like that just to make sure Tracer can stand because this is, <laughs> this is just not going going to work. And that's about it. That's how to prepare a 3D model from either Overwatch or any other game for 3D printing. Or maybe you just want like higher subdivided models ready to go. All right, so the tracer part of this print didn't turn out great because it's so small, but for the rest I think it's pretty successful. Look, you can even like pop it off and pop, pop it back onto its base statue. Yeah. Anyway, uh, I hope you learned something. I hope you enjoyed and I hope to see you next time.